Back in the day, if you had a healthy endowment, you were set. Nowadays, depending on that endowment payout, seems a little shaky. Back in the day, we needed to produce more PhDs to fill positions in the academy. Now the academy is producing an abundance of PhDs for a very few jobs. And we have master's level students graduating with significant debt to enter jobs paying an average of $34,000 a year. And we aren't sure if we're meeting the religious needs of our communities of faith or society. The list goes on. Fact of the matter is, our habitual responses are not working for this transitional period. When we collect our thoughts about these matters, we come pretty quickly to the point where we say, we need to be doing something differently. We've been knowing for a while that we're facing shifts. Why aren't we doing something differently? What are we waiting for? That's what I want to talk with you about for a few moments. Waiting for a divine bailout. Waiting for a divine bailout. A few verses from Psalm 40. I waited and waited and waited. I waited for Hashem. Then Hashem turned toward me and listened to my cry for help. And then Hashem brought me up out of the roaring pit. From the deep mire of mud, Hashem lifted me and set my feet on solid ground, making steady my step. Hashem gave a new song in my mouth, a song of praise unto Hashem, waiting for a divine bailout. We wait as individuals and as institutions Maybe waiting for something new to happen. Maybe waiting while we analyze the challenges and opportunities. Maybe waiting for things to be like they used to be. We find ourselves, theological education, waiting. The issues are tough and the context is complicated. It's easy to look like you're depending on God Easy to look like you're waiting on God when you're in times of prosperity, when you have many choices and opportunities. The stock market is up, so the endowment is good. Students are pouring into the classes. But it's not easy to wait on God in the lonely, messy pit. Sometimes we long for the good old days, but often, Waiting does not happen in easy spaces. Waiting happens where we cannot see clearly. When we can only look at the unknown, watching but not seeing. Where things are messy. When assumptions have changed. As Alan Greenspan said when he gave testimony about a recent and current crisis, I'm paraphrasing. I was blown away. My assumptions, my worldview was turned upside down. What I thought was true wasn't true. In the midst of concerns or even despair, crashing dollars, decreasing enrollment, decreasing employment, unclarified needs, we in theological education may be looking at the sides of a pit. Sometimes we may not even recognize that we are in a pit and waiting. Or if we've had hints, we might ignore the hints, pretending consciously or subconsciously that we do not see the issues at hand. We really just do not have the time or energy to deal with them. And besides, we're not the one who made the pit. We just fell in it accidentally when we were going along doing our job. 
Notice for the psalmist, there's no indication of blame. Just a recognition of the pit. As my father used to say to me as a child, well actually he still does, it's not what happens to you, Alice. It's how you respond to it that matters. Now, in my tradition, people help the preacher. Okay? <laughs> Let me try that again. Y'all making me do this by myself. As my father used to say to me when I was a child, and actually still does, it is not what happens to you, Alice, that matters. It is how you respond to it that matters. And so, don't stop. And some of us may desperately want to climb out. We are impatient people. We want to hurry solutions. Maybe sometimes resorting to quick fist fixes that exacerbate the issues. But that doesn't work either, and we find ourselves in the pit waiting. Perhaps the psalmist suggests to us that it is in the pit where we learn new ways of being. Even a new way of being in relationship with the divine, a relationship not dependent on prosperity, or even on clear order. When you are in the deep, dark, roaring, muddy pit, and you cry out to God, Oh God, how much longer must I wait? I do not understand, God, how long must we wait? In our crying out, in our trying to understand, we learn new ways to be. Think about waiting on a personal level. Waiting sometimes can be difficult, intense, painful. Perhaps there are times when we wait on God and it seems like God has departed. We do not experience the presence of God. We feel empty. And we may assume God is not there. And in the midst of this waiting, this apparent silence from God, our narcissistic interventions come tricking their way in, pushing us to resorting to spaces of dysfunctional comfort, such as this waiting on God. Perhaps that is our reality for theological education today. We are waiting as we try to understand our reality. How should we see this pit? Please allow me to describe what I believe are the contours of this theological education pit. Perhaps hard to see because we've done a little redecorating and we feel right at home. <laughs> theological education as we understand it today came about in a very different era. We don't have to delve far into American religious life and history to know that the model we operate under today came about in a time when denominationalism flourished. The core of theological education was formed at a time when the conversations were between history and philosophy. We came into being to train ministers, men, for pastoral ministry. Denominational funding formed the primary support system for seminaries. Curricula developed around preparing men for eventual pastorates in tall steeple churches. Churches grew, denominations grew, but we must see clearly now that the model that built us will not sustain us. And we, as theological education, are living lives of quiet desperation as we try to understand and grow in the relationship 